Today's tutorial is about learning about interactive elements using ICT that I want you to incorporate into web pages and other things that you produce in class. I want to explain some of the philosophies behind why I want you to use this. First of all, it's to do with the interaction of, of the user. The level of engagement. I want the user, the learner, to engage with the medium more and therefore um, have fun while doing it but also to increase the level of understanding well that from my perspective is the most important in addition uh, while you understand more and have fun and you're engaged you will learn more and hopefully learning will be deeper and that you will retain more now where I want you to start is uh, with this only two clicks site. I will quickly show you where it is on my geography site. It's under web tools. How do I want you to go about it? First of all you're creating things and by creating things um, you're engaging in more understanding and learning. A lot of these interactive elements produce links links that you can put into blogs, documents, PowerPoints. You can also um, get these links directly from YouTube clips as you can see there. If you go to um, share, um, down there you'll see the YouTube link and you can put that into as a hyperlink and a whole lot of documents. The other thing which you can do um, as you can see here, this is from a Prezi site where um, you will go to, to do your tutorial. Uh, you can either share or indeed embed things. Embed things um, means that you can get a whole um, block like this uh, into a blog, into a wiki and into some other um, interactive elements that I'll show you in a little while. You can also get um, bits like the whole YouTube box with the view, viewing screen um, put into other a, um, applications you have to go to share and embed and you get this embed code. Importantly you have to watch tutorials to, to learn how to use these applications and that's the only way that I learned. You, YouTube is your best friend. To start creating a Prezi, first click Here's an example New Prezi. Of Prezi's beautifully Prezi. designed templates can help you express your ideas as a visual metaphor. So what sort of interactive elements am I talking about? Presentations are the most common one. You're currently watching a Prezi presentation um, using ICT. Moving visuals. You've got videos, animations, and movies. An important part of checking people's understanding and getting the interaction is to quiz them um, and also to survey their opinions and answers. You're currently listening to a tutorial and there's various means that you can use to also do the same to give people instructions and to interact with your audience. And audio you can go straight for a podcast and there's various other means that I will show you how you can use audio um, in your presentation. Okay, let's look at presentations first. Good old PowerPoint, you know how that works. Um, that can be used as an embedded file. Good old Prezi, you're watching one of those now. How this has worked is that I have produced this um, presentation and then it creates a link at the end which I then embed in other documents like my blog. Slidebean is another way of presenting information. It's a fairly fun way to go. It's an easy alternative to PowerPoint. Another alternative is Google Presentations which is very much like PowerPoint. It is a collaborative document that you, you can use in various other um, publications. MoveNote is a very interesting uh, medium 
where what you do you are giving a, a lecture if you like or presentation and on the right hand side you have essentially a PowerPoint presentation and you move um, through your PowerPoint presentation as you're speaking so it's another way of interacting with people you can obviously see your face Padlet now you guys have used pa Padlet um, it's a wall where you can put a whole lot of um, things onto this wall. You can see on this wall there's videos, um, images and so forth. Let me just show you an um, example that I've got. So when you go to it f for the first time, you just type Padlet up there, say build a wall, I've, I've started one, there's one there and I've put three things up there, two images and a video. If you want to put something somewhere, you simply type your name, um, you can write something, if you wanted to include something like a URL, um, either a image or a YouTube clip, the address, just put it in there, um, and then you finish up and press Add, and then you come up with one of those. Lino is a very similar product. Again, it's a wall. You can see it's it's in a in a form of a sticky note sort of thing, sticky note. And you can also add videos, images, presentations, all sorts of things. Um, it's just a different way of presenting information. It's a bit higgledy piggledy, but um, it can suit some purposes. Glossy is is an online um, pamphlet maker or a little magazine maker. Um, again, you can include the same sort of stuff, but page by page, you will see a magazine style page uh, publication. Moving visuals, now this is um, some of my favorites. Movely is a particularly interesting one where you can see the hand writing the particular image or the writing as, as it's going along. I'll just quickly show you one of my examples. Here's one I've made for my accounting students. You can see the hand going there, drawing and writing as well. And you may think that's that's quite a groovy way of interacting with people and make it more interesting. Again, I learned using that uh, with a tutorial, and that's what you'll have to do if you want to go forward with this. Movie Maker, you've come across this one, I'm sure. That's quite an easy one for most of you. You'll be familiar with that. But a lot of the skills you learn on this you can use for these other programs that I'm showing you. Powtoon is a cartoon maker. It goes very much the same as the Movely thing. On the bottom here you've got to put your various bits that you want. You've got purple and the poses and the prompts which obviously are moving. So it makes it into an animation. Another such product is GoAnimate, where you put a whole lot of things in the timeline. You're restricted to 30 seconds with this one, um, unless you want to pay, which obviously I don't. But again, if you want to use this medium, you have to use um, a tutorial in order to learn all about it. But the tutorials tend to be only about two or three minutes. It's quick to get going. Now, another important aspect of interacting with your audience is to um, set quizzes and to ask surveys. Survey Monkey is an old common one. You can ask them about their opinions. Um, you can ask them about um, their knowledge and it's quite easy to do. Similarly, Quizlet is a good medium to work, to work out whether people know certain terminology. It's a good way of getting easy feedback. I will show you an example that I've made. Here it is. Basically, all we have to put in is the term, the definition, the term, and the definition across here. You type those in, and when you're ready to go, you go to flashcards, and they come up as cards. Ecological footprint. What is it? If you want another answer, you click on it. Measures human demand for ecological services. You go to the next one, and this is part of your um, learning phase. You can even Happy Planet Index. You can even click on it if you like. And this is a good way of learning your terminology. Then you've got um, a test that you can do. It's generated differently every time. 
and you have to type in your response there you've got matching questions you've got multiple choice questions and true false questions and that is all generated by what you saw initially where I put in my terms and their definitions you've got this scatter thing here with what it does you have to match up your terms with your definition when you match up these terms correctly then they disappear and then you try and do this obviously as fast as you can another favorite of mine is what we call Google Forms it's again part of the Google Drive suite you have to sign up to Google Drive that's no problem you can see that I've been using it quite a lot here when you click here you create a form and you get something looking like this and you can see that I've already made two questions um, what's Mr. Myers favorite football team you get extra extra points for that you can also include images um, here uh, I'll quickly put in an item you can have a choose from a list type thing what is the capital city of Tasmania and you can choose from a list option Launceston Georgetown Hobart Quiet question done okay so once that that saves automatically if I want to have a look at the live form it just shows me um, what it's going to look like if I pass on this to any respondent so it's a matter of sending this link via email or clicking it in as, as a hyper link in any document so I answer this of course I'm going to go for the blues I can choose to look at this beautifully uh, created presentation and answer that and then when I answer this you can see here it's from the list go Hobart you submit and away you go so that's Google Forms Poll Everywhere is an online uh, polling service that's very powerful you can get people to use their mobile phones um, I've used that quite often which is very useful and then what you get is these results Puzzle Maker is an old-fashioned puzzle um, generator if you like where you can make word puzzles and crossword puzzles again you produce them and with a link and then link them to document or blog audio there's a number of options there one's called voice thread which I really like because what you what people can do um, you can get other people to uh, respond um, one way to interact with people is to is to ha invite them to write on a blog and this is sort of like a blog except that you put in your response uh, via an audio file and when you click on these I, ca I can't do that at the moment but when you click on these uh, your your audio response will be replayed but you can also type things so it's, a, it's an easy nice way for people a group of people to respond to this picture or to an issue or a map or whatever screencast o -matic, that's basically what I'm using at the moment where everything that is comes on the screen and your voices behind it will be recorded and that's what it looks like a bit when you use it it's a very easy format to use it's, it's a good way to show something that you know or want to demonstrate something like I am currently now the way forward look at my only two clicks for other options not only are the ones I've shown you but there's plenty of other options you obviously need to look at the tutorials and how to use the app and that's to use with everyone I've used all these and that's how I've learned you need to sign up with all of these things and, and have a go um, and what you do you you generate links or embed codes and put them into um, your blog or wiki or it can be also a web page or a presentation like a PowerPoint or e e even um, Prezi like this so remember to make some mistakes essentially so that you learn lots so I hope that's been 
of use to you obviously you will need to check with me about other options that you've got my advice to you is to take something that you are most uh, familiar with take small steps but take a step and try and challenge yourself to extend your understanding of using ICT mediums to make your presentations whether it be a web page a PowerPoint a blog a Word document more interactive and therefore more fun for the user to look at. Thanks for listening.